Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be creating a set of stiletto nails with encapsulated 3D flowers. They're going to be bomb guys and they do sound a little complicated, but they're not, I promise. And just stay tuned and let's get into it. Coming in with my first bead of cover new blush. I'm gonna pat it into place, make sure I get all my sidewalls and everything covered. Now I'm brushing it down towards the tip, but stopping before my nail bed ends or where I want it to end. I like doing the more pointier nail bed for a stiletto tip. I think that looks better. Or I like the way it looks on me. I think it just makes the nail overall look more narrow. And I like that look a lot. So now for my cuticle bead guys. I just put place the bead down. And then lightly around the cuticle. I'll move it around where I want it. And then brush the rest down towards the other bead. Alright so right here I'm adding a bead of the blue color in the collection, bending my hand the other way, and then blending it back towards my cuticle. This is the easiest way I found to blend my ombre before I even add the other color and try to keep blending back and forth and back and forth and going nuts. This is the easiest way, I can't stress that enough, guys you have to try it. I'm going to go out with my second bead and do exactly the same thing and you guys can see already how easily it blends in and how smooth it looks. For this finger, I'm doing an elongated nail bed again with the Cover New Blush. And I am just pushing in my side walls as you guys can see. Now I'm going in with my cuticle bead and brushing downward first. Then I'll go in. Make sure everything's flush around my cuticle. And then I'll wipe around my cuticle to make sure nothing got on my skin which is very crucial. It will cause lifting and your nails will not last you a day. Maybe two. Now guys, I'm adding a little bead down here on my left side of the sidewall. I did not like the way um, that looked. It looked like it had a divot in there, so I just came in with a small bead to fix it up, blended it backward first, and you can't even tell. It's the same method I use for my ombre. Um, it really helps with the blending process. As you can see, I don't, I mean, I can't tell. All right guys, so now I'm going in with that plum color, going around my cuticle, making sure everything looks good, and then brushing the rest down towards the tip, but staying in the middle. Now I'm going to wipe around as always to make sure nothing is on my skin. Now I'm adding another bead right in the middle so that I can get the blend a little further down. As you can see, I went a little too far down, so I had to wipe a little off and brush it a little bit backward. Right, so for this nail, I'm adding the plum color. 
I added it a little on the wetter side, so I just painted it down towards the tip first and then hurried up, turned around, blended it back towards my cuticle. Now I'm adding another bead in there and I'm going to blend that back before anything and then blend that downward towards the tip. I just wanted to inform you guys of my ring finger not being in the video. You guys didn't want to see it. It was a hot mess and I don't know why that color in the collection, it's the raspberry color, gives me a problem. I love me a secret that, you know, I have everything from me a secret and everything is always really good. Um, I just don't know what's going on with that one color, raspberry. It just doesn't work out. Every time I use it, it's really sticky. If you guys have that same problem, comment down below. If you guys have a good raspberry color, let me know. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with mine. Um, so yeah, I'm just blending back and forth between the pink and the purple until I get the blend exactly the way I want it. Guys, now it's time for the 3D work. I just set a bead down. Um, I used white first because that's the lightest color and then dipped it into the pink color, the lighter pink color. Um, and then I just let it sit for six seconds, five seconds, something like that. And once it's like movable and not like runny, that's when I come in and start patting it into place. And wherever I pat it in at is where I want my definition. So you guys just keep that in mind, the way you interpret flowers, the way you like your flowers to look, the details, all that stuff depends on you and your practicing, your 3D artwork. It's not an easy thing to explain, so forgive me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just keep watching and you guys will see how I create this design.
so right here I'm taking the light green color and a, the green tea color in the fruity collection for that darker green I pat as soon as I place the bead down and start getting it into place and shaping it the way I want it then I come in with my cuticle pusher when it's set down a little bit and then start making the lines for the leaves for all that detail that I like to add into my 3D art. I also add detail with the brush so you guys know. So there's different kinds of details and it makes it look real, uh, like realistic. Alright guys, so right here I'm encapsulating my nails. What I do first is wipe down the nail with some monomer to make sure nothing got stuck in there, any dust or anything like that. Then I go in and I start in the middle or yeah, towards the middle. I start with my first bead when I encapsulate and I start brushing it down to make sure everything gets in there. And I do work with butter beads just so everything can get encapsulated and I don't miss anything. And I also build up my structure with this brush. By the way, this brush is huge. It's a number 12. I don't use it for everything. I use it mostly just for this, for like encapsulation and stuff. Um, it's really quick and easy. And I love using this brush for especially encapsulation because it can take you a long time to get that structure perfect and everything. And you don't want to spend forever doing your nails, especially when you already spent a long time doing everything else. So yeah, guys, try the bigger brushes. It works out. The only thing I will say is it retains a lot of monomer, so you will have wetter beads than usual, so you might have to adjust your ratio, but you'll be fine once you figure that out.
Alright guys, so now I'm gonna go in and add a few crystals before I top coat. I'm using the Mia Secret Gel Resin. And you only need a tiny amount. And then I'm gonna use the gel activator that comes with it. This product is really good. Um, I could say truthfully I don't have any problems with it. My crystals never come off unless I rip them off. Or pry them off. Um, so that's always good. So finally it's time for the top coat. I love this part. It really does bring out everything that you've done on your work. And you can see the effect that the 3D has once you encapsulate it and everything. All your details, everything just comes to life. This is Mia Secret Ultra Shine Gel Top Coat. It's a non-wipe. It's a really good top coat. I love this top coat. I'm actually running out of it. Um, I use it so much, that's why. Um, yeah, so I just avoid the crystals as I top coat. And if I do get the crystals a little bit, I just take my finger and wipe before I cure. And that's about it. Alright guys, so we're reaching the end of the video, so I just want to say thank you for stopping by. Thank you for spending your time with me, because I really enjoy having you guys here. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for those reveal shots, and I'll see you next time. Bye!